So with the popularity of my recent videos and shock videos in general just being passed around recently, I had a thought. I thought I haven't had in a while, but what would happen if somebody actually ended their life live on camera? And I mean, not just live stream, but on television. And it has happened, and not just once. Christine Chubbuck was a news anchor in the 1970s in Sarasota, Florida, and she ended up killing herself on TV, but the footage was never leaked. Was it? Well, supposedly it has been, and we're going to take a look at it. But first off, if you're not subscribed, go ahead and click the subscribe button. It only takes a second. It's free, and you get all my content almost daily, usually daily, for free right to your phone or wherever you're watching me on right now. You can also hit the description right there and go into the link tree and, well, connect with me on Discord, Twitter, and um, TikTok. I forgot what it was called for a second. I got more um, social media coming out soon, so be on the lookout for that. But without further ado, Let's look at this. Before we actually look at the footage though, I feel that it's important we actually talk about what happened and what led Christine to do this in the first place. She was a 29 year old news anchor, like I said before, located in Sarasota, Florida at the time when this occurred, and she lived a very depressing life. I've been working in news and media since 1966, but also worked in hospitals and ended up working in a cable and television firm in Sarasota, which ultimately led her to move almost immediately to ABC in Sarasota. She struggled with relationships and dating in general, and that could be due to her low self-esteem and long working hours, but nonetheless, this contributed heavily to her depression. Several years before her death, she moved to her, uh, her family's summer cottage in Siesta Key, Florida, and her room was decorated much like a teenager's with a canopy bed and very childlike decor. And she primarily lived alone up until her parents divorced and her mother and younger brother moved in. And then once her younger brother moved out, her older brother moved in. She described her family as her best friends, so she was kind of a shut-in and didn't really have friends as well. Christine took her position seriously, inviting officials from Sarasota and Bradenton. <laughs> uh, 941. Yuck. To the show to discuss things uh, like what they could do for the community, and it was a fast-growing beach community at the time in the 70s. However, her depression grew and she let her family know the lengths of how far it actually went including her suicidal thoughts and tendencies, but she never voiced her intentions to actually commit suicide live on TV. She attempted to overdose on drugs in 1970, and she was actually seeing a psychiatrist up until a few weeks before the incident. However, her mother knew about this and didn't let the television network know because she feared that her daughter would lose her job, which given the time, I understand, they would have fired her. Chubbuck's focus on lack of intimacy in relationships is usually considered the driving force for her depression in general. Her mother summarized her suicide was pretty much because her personal life was not what she wanted. She lamented to her coworkers that her 30th birthday was fast approaching and she was still a virgin and actually only been on two dates with one man. That led to nothing. Damn. On the morning of her 29th birthday, July 15th, 1974, Chubbuck entered her work and surprised her coworkers who were met with confusion when she said that she was going to be opening the newscast on Suncoast Digest, something she's never done before. The morning guest waited across the studio as the first eight minutes went as planned, and Chubbuck just covered the first three national stories as well as a shooting that happened in the local area. However, when the film reel uh, jammed and wouldn't play, Chubbuck decided to look at the camera and say as in the, in the my <laughs> as described in the best way I can put it, in the most anchor type fashion, the following. In keeping with Channel 40's policy of bringing you the best of blood and guts and living color, you are about to witness another first, an attempted suicide. She followed that with pulling a 38 revolver from her person and putting it behind her right ear and pulling the trigger. The camera then cut the black as quick as they could, but not before thousands of people saw the live broadcast. And that was it. Gorehounds have been been obsessed with this sense, and actually it used to fascinate me when I was very young as well, just because of the allure of the tape not being out there. It's said to be sealed away and basically just in storage for the past 40 years. But recently something got leaked on the YouTube that's the supposed footage, but is it real? Not likely. <laughs> It 
It's fake. It's a very good fake because of the fact that they replicated that desk to a T, they kept to the script. It's just the deterioration of the video itself. Despite being in storage, yes, there would be deterioration to film. It's just far too great. It's so unlegible to the audio up until the point where she pulls the trigger with a thud, and that thud is very pronounced. That's also contradictory to the statements of what happened. And what happened was she actually apparently slumped back and just dropped. It wasn't like a slam drop kind of thing. And you can't even make out this woman's face. It's it's a well done hoax, but it is a hoax nonetheless. And some people also want to pose the argument of it being black and white. Well, there would probably be some film in black and white. That's not too surprising, but it's not likely in this case either. And just to let you in on a secret, that's how I'm actually able to show you this. It's not real. One of our co-workers actually confirmed this was not real, and I'm going to read that to you now and prove that. It was apparently shared on Facebook from Steve Newman to a guy named Gordon Galbraith, which is already like, whoa, what if it was real, but okay. The guy Gordon Galbraith confirms that it's fake. The only camera present was the studio camera, and the second it happened, that camera was on a full shot of her. I saw it live on a preview monitor, but rather wish I had it. There was no TiVo, VCRs, or even digital cameras then. I'm not sure about the VCR part, to be honest with you. But regardless, it was a one, this was a one-camera show, and for those few who actually saw it on air, it was much closer up, but to anyone else, this would appear very authentic, even with all the dropouts and distortion of the used tapes were employed. So there you have it. Chances are we'll never actually see that, and for those who are wanting to see it, it'll forever just be one of those tantalizing gore videos, which is already kind of weird in itself, but I guess I get it. People were curious. But this co-worker confirmed that. So it sits in storage, I guess, in a law firm, and it does still, in fact, exist. However, the likelihood of it ever being leaked is slim to none. So, with that said, if you like what you saw, please like and subscribe. Dislike if you dislike it. Go ahead and hit my link tree real quick. It only takes a second. You can connect with me on TikTok, Twitter, connect, hop in our Discord, suggest videos. Also, I'm open to feedback down below in the comments if you have anything you want me to make or see or just take a look into. Go ahead and drop me a line. It only takes a moment. But definitely click subscribe. You want to. <laughs> Anyways, see ya.